Hey everyone, we are back into my dinner and a movie series. If you don't know me, lounging around watching my favorite movies is like the best way that I love to decompress with a great plate of food. So I was thinking since we are coming up to the date of that fateful night for Titanic on April 14th, we're gonna go ahead and commemorate it with a dinner and a movie video. And I'm so excited because I cannot even tell you how many times in my life I have already seen this movie. <laughs> Hands down, one of my favorites. Super excited about this one. Now, I always love to do these dinner and a movie meals, somewhat inspired by the movie that we're watching. So for this one on today's Titanic menu, I went ahead and grabbed a couple of the surviving menus that actually came from the RMS Titanic chefs. And we're gonna pick out a few of these dishes to try and recreate at home. And so from their lunch menu, I'm picking out the chicken a la Maryland. This is also served with either mashed, fried, or jacket potatoes. I'll go ahead and throw a salad in there, some rolls. And I saw on their dessert menu, they also served vanilla and chocolate eclairs. And although I would love to make eclairs from scratch, I don't have the time for that today, but what I am gonna do is make a no-bake chocolate eclair pie because it is super simple and easy and my family loves this dessert. <laughs> now, I am in no way even close to being an expert chef like Titanic had for their food and meals. So although these won't be super historically accurate, we're gonna put our own spin on it because I mean, it's our kitchen, right? <laughs> so let's get started. Now for my dinner rolls, I assume that most of the Titanic meals came with some sort of bread. I know on third class, they had something called cabin biscuits. But if you watch, if you follow any of my clearance hauls, I actually got a couple bags of these Rhodes thaw, rise, and bake dinner rolls. These were on clearance for a dollar. I took out a few a couple of hours ago to go ahead and start thawing. Now they've been sitting on the counter at room temperature and they're rising pretty well. So I'm gonna let them rise just for a little longer and then we'll throw them in the oven once we have our chicken going. Now for my chocolate eclair pie, this is a no bake one so it's super simple but I'm going to make sort of a, a small batch that fits in this Pyrex because we don't need a lot of this or it's usually not safe for us to have a lot of it around. So I'm gonna start off with this one ounce package of vanilla flavored Jello pudding mix. This one's sugar free, so I'm using that because that's what I have on hand. And I'm gonna start adding in some milk I think we're gonna do about one to two cups. We'll see how well this does. I'm kind of guesstimating a little bit on the measurement, but it's instant pudding. I'm sure we'll be fine. Pudding looks pretty good consistency here. It took about a cup and a half to get to this texture. Now I have a container of Cool Whip. This one's zero sugar. Again, I'm just using what I have in my fridge about a three-fourths of the container left in here. And it's been thawing on my countertop. I'm gonna go ahead and add all of this in. Maybe it's closer to two-thirds of a container left. But I do want to fold, because I want to keep it nice and light, hopefully. That looks pretty good. Perfect. Now we want to start the layering in our container. So I'm gonna use my honey graham crackers and start with a bottom layer. And you're really just covering the bottom. One layer of my pudding and Cool Whip mix. What I love about this dessert is that you do not have to be perfect. I've made it so many times because everyone loves it. One more layer of your graham crackers. Another layer of our mixture. And again, layer of graham crackers. 
Now I'm just gonna use this ready-made frosting. I found this literally in the back of my <laughs> pantry, so I'm glad I had it on hand, or else I would have to make my own. What you wanna do is warm this up slightly in the microwave so that it's more spreadable here. So we'll do that real quick. All right, I had this in the microwave for about 20 seconds, and now it's nice and spreadable. Add that on top and spread that out across the corners. All right, perfect. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and cover this with some plastic wrap and we're gonna let this sit in the fridge. You do need a good maybe six hours or so so that the graham crackers can slightly soften. It's gonna be so delicious. By the time we cook dinner later and it's time for dessert, this should be ready. Okay, so now I wanna get started on peeling my potatoes. These are just, these are just some regular russet potatoes. Now on the Titanic menu, it offers, I believe it's the first class menu. They offer mashed, fried, and jacket potatoes. And I think jacket potatoes are just baked potatoes. We're going to be doing mashed potatoes today because I think it'll go well with our chicken. Now, there's several dining scenes in the movie, but you don't really get a good look at all of the foods that they're eating. Of course, you have their little luncheon where Rose and her mother and Cal are sitting in that beautiful little restaurant there. Our master shipbuilder, Mr. Andrews here, designed her from the keel plates up. We'll both have the lamb, rare, with very little mint sauce. You like lamb, right, sweet beer? Sausage. But uh, my favorite dining scene is when Cal actually invited Jack to dine with them for dinner. Here I am After on the grandest ship in the world having champagne with you fine people. <laughs> I'll take some of that. And Rose's mother kind of forces him <laughs> to talk about his situation, i.e. his lack of money <laughs> and I guess what she would qualify as success. And how is it you have means to travel? I work my way from place to place, you know, tramp steamers and such. And you find that sort of rootless existence appealing, do you? Now I'm just going to cut up the potatoes down a bit so that we can toss them in some salted cold water and get them to boil. When you're making mashed potatoes, you definitely want to start them in cold water and bring them up to a boil because that way they'll cook evenly. We'll get these started. Now I wanna get started on our chicken a la Maryland. So I have here four boneless, skinless chicken thighs. These are just Kirkland brand from Costco. I, when I did a little research on this recipe, I've seen people use bone-in chicken, boneless chicken breast. There, there's just so many different variations of this recipe and I'm not even sure which exactly, which one exactly the chefs on Titanic actually used. I'm just gonna do it with what I have on hand here. Thighs will do just fine. Chicken a la Maryland is technically just a fried chicken and it actually comes with a gravy on top. Originally supposed to be like a cream gravy for this chicken. When I was doing a little bit of reading, it's thought that the chefs on Titanic actually made it a little fancier. So instead of doing a cream gravy, they did more like a white wine and like butter flour mixture. So today we're just gonna kind of make up my own little concoction for a gravy sauce that goes on top of this fried chicken. Now I just seasoned my chicken with partial garlic salt, partial seasoned salt, and then some pepper. Now I'm going to do just a quick assembly line of seasoned flour. I have an egg and milk mixture that I'll whisk up and I'm gonna do seasoned flour again. So for this one, I'm just using what's in my pantry and it's this brand of seasoned flour. 
And in my egg mixture, I'm just gonna add a little more seasoning to that. So a little bit of garlic salt, a little bit of the seasoned salt, and some pepper. And I'm not going to add extra seasoning to the flour because that's already seasoned. Okay, so now we're just gonna take our seasoned chicken thighs, do a coating of both sides in our first flour batch. Shake off excess. We'll do a coating inside the seasoned egg and milk mixture. Shake that off. And then a final dip in our seasoned flour. Again, make sure it's nicely coated. I might even just add a little bit of pressure to pack it in a bit. We'll let that rest on a plate while we do the rest. I would probably say for the movie, one of my favorite scenes when Rose meets him at the clock and she decides to go down with him, you know, to where the real party's at. So you wanna go to a real party? love it because you actually see Rose just feel like normal and free dancing around like crazy. Now we have all of our chicken coated. We're gonna move over to the stove where I have my oil heating up. Okay. Really quick, we're gonna check on our potatoes and they're pretty tender. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain the water. Now while we're hot, I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic salt, lots of pepper. And I don't wanna add a ton of salt at first because I am going to be adding salted butter in here. So I'll throw that in while these potatoes are warm to help it melt down a bit. And I'm going to put the lid on just till that butter melts. All right, so I have my oven set at 350. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in for the next 15 minutes. Now our oil is nice and hot. I have maybe about a fourth inch in there. And we're gonna drop in our chicken pieces. And we're gonna get these nice and golden on each side. And I'll leave them in here for a few minutes, maybe about four or five minutes, and then we'll flip. Okay, it's been about four minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and flip. And I wanna do this carefully so that I don't break up the breading. So we have a nice color on the side. And again, we'll check it in a few minutes to see what our, temp what our temperature is at. Okay, so while our chicken is finishing cooking, we're gonna go ahead and mash up our potatoes. That butter looks pretty melted in there. So for our cream, I'm going to add a little bit of milk, maybe about a fourth cup or so. And then instead of sour cream, I'm going to add Greek yogurt which will act pretty similarly. It has the same sort of tartness to it. I pretty much eat Greek yogurt now in place of sour cream because it tastes the same to me. And we'll give that a mix. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of parsley flakes to this. One last mix and these are done. It's been 15 minutes. You can see my rolls are super brown. I'm just gonna take a little bit of butter and rub the tops with them. And these are pretty hot and warm right now, but I'll cover them so that they stay nice and warm until we're ready to eat. 
Now I just pulled our chicken out of the pan. It took about another four minutes on that side to get to temperature. So I'm having it rest on a wire rack because I don't want it to get soggy and lose our nice crisp. Okay, and we'll so ahead. now to get started on our gravy, I'm going to add a bit of the oil from the pan that we fried the chicken in, a little bit of salted butter to that oil. This is on medium heat right now. And I'm going to break out the same seasoned flour that I used on the chicken. Not the used seasoned flour, the good seasoned flour. And I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons in here to get our roux started. And I'm just going to whisk that in the oil and butter mixture. I just want to work on cooking out the taste of the raw flour and continuously whisk it. We're gonna add a splash of wine. I'm just using Pinot. Turn this to medium low. So just a nice splash. In there, whisk that in. And this roux is gonna get thick again, don't worry. I'm just working through the flavor here. Now I'm going to take some chicken broth. I'm using reduced sodium and pour that in. Maybe about a cup. I don't have exact measurements because I'm making this up as I go along. We're inventing our own little gravy sauce here. You can see it's starting to thicken. I'll add a splash more. Now, because what I've read, the traditional gravy for Chicken Maryland, has cream in it. I would probably add a little bit of heavy cream if I had that, but I don't. So I'm just gonna add a splash of milk. And work that in. Now at this point, I want to taste it to check for seasoning. I can, I can taste the flavor start to come, so I'm gonna add a little bit of seasoned salt in here. Not too much, because this is seasoned flour that we had in here. And a little bit of pepper. And now, I think it's perfect. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this dinner and a movie Titanic edition meal. I wish you were here to smell this because it smells so good right now. This chicken is super crisp. The seasoning is on point. Love it. My mashed potatoes are nice and smooth. And I can't believe we just winged that gravy. It tastes amazing. So much flavor in it. And then I just paired this with my Rhodes dinner rolls and a really simple salad. We can't forget about our no-bake chocolate eclair pie. I am so glad I made it. It's always a favorite. Plus, it's so simple to make and tastes delicious. So, if you enjoyed this one, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you think or what your favorite parts of the movie are as well. We are starving, so we are gonna go ahead and get down on this meal. And if you wanna see any more of my dinner and a movie videos, go ahead and check out my food playlist on my channel. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of these videos when they come out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.